Thanks, much. Just to pick up on what we have left off. Uh, is it your understanding that Israel is trying to minimize civilian casualties? Is it your assessment? It, it is. It's our understanding that they do attempt to minimize civilian casualties. They talked about public, that publicly. We think there are additional steps that they can take. The Secretary communicated that to them very clearly when he was in Israel, and we've had continued ongoing conversations with them about that. Thanks so much. If uh, hospitals are uh, indeed sanctuaries for, for Hamas, which Israel says it is, is there any active discussion over um, creating field hospitals and potentially U.S. involvement in it? Uh, not, not U.S. involvement inside Gaza. But yes, there has been uh, uh, conversations with our allies and partners about setting up additional field hospitals. There's been conversations about setting up uh, additional facilities where, where people either in southern Gaza or people who have moved to southern Gaza from the north can seek uh, uh, medical care. As, you, uh, as I think you probably know, there are, are uh, wounded Palestinians uh, from northern Gaza who have been evacuated and left through Rafah Gate to seek medical care. So yes, that is something we continue to work on. Thank you. Please come back tomorrow on Ukraine and yeah. Russian Can I just ask one more on this hospital um, issue? Given what you just said, what Jake Sullivan has said, and what the Secretary said about far too many Palestinians uh, killed, we um, asked you this question in previous weeks, but in light of all of these new developments and the targeting of the hospitals, is there any uh, intent in at this department or the administration to take a look at, in a formal way, uh, whether Israel has followed the rules of war? Again, we all we are monitoring the situation very closely, as we always monitor conflicts. Um, but I don't. I'm not going to provide any update on internal deliberations. I should not be interpreting that the internal deliberation part as there is an internal de deliberation you, on this. You should you should interpret it exactly the same way you should have interpreted it two weeks ago when I gave the same so answer, which is, is no, I'm not going to comment on okay, internal but deliberations. But you're saying there is no change in the thinking in light of I, I, the recent development. I am saying what I just said, not what you are claiming I said. What I'm saying, <laughs> so I will, I will use my own words. And what, what I said is we're monitoring, of course. We monitor this situation as we monitor any conflict. But in terms of our internal decision making process, internal deliberations, I'm not going to. You're asking not gonna, why, I mean, you're, you're, you understand those. why I'm asking this, right? Because you're saying there are additional steps that they can take, but they don't seem to be taking them right now. And, you know, all of this is unfolding with the hospitals. So I'm wondering if there is any change in the administration's thinking on this. I'm just not going to, uh, I'm just not going to talk about internal matters. Go ahead, Michelle. I have a couple of questions, Matt. Uh, first, are you on the same page with Israel regarding how to deal with uh, Hezbollah? Did you ask? Or did the administration ask uh, the Israeli government not to escalate uh, the situation with Hezbollah and uh, drag the U.S. to a new war or broader war? So I'm not going to get into internal conversations with the government of Israel. I will say that you have heard us say publicly a number of times one of our primary objectives is to keep this conflict from widening, and that means to keep it from widening both uh, in terms of preventing an additional conflict in the north of Israel with Hezbollah and to prevent uh, conflict widening to other countries in the region. Are you aware of the reports uh, that uh, Israel targeted journalists in, in South Lebanon today? And do you uh, have any comment on I'm that? not aware of those, of those reports today. If, most of, if it just came in the last bit while it's coming out, uh, I haven't seen it. And finally, in the supplemental package request, the OMB stated that the crisis in Gaza uh, could result in displacement across borders and higher regional humanitarian needs, and funding may be used to meet evolving programming requirements outside of Gaza, and uh, including Israel, West Bank, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, and Egypt. Uh, what does the administration mean by that? So I think you should take into that that we are doing prudent planning, as we always do in these situations. It's not a, pr a prediction about what might happen or what will happen in the future. Uh, as I, as, as, uh, I said a, a moment ago, we've made very clear that Palestinians should not be displaced from Gaza. But as part of our planning, we're planning for any number of scenarios. We want to keep this conflict from widening, but we have to be prudent and plan for any po uh, potential humanitarian scenarios should they emerge. Matt, is it, is it correct, going, staying on the supplemental, is it correct that the supplemental, and this came out, I guess, while we were gone, but uh, uh, removes uh, all congressional oversight from arms transfers to Israel? No, Is that correct? that's 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 not okay. ex exactly correct. Um, not exactly correct. It makes it th that proposed waiver that's in the supplemental makes uh, zero changes to how arms sales would be notified to Congress and made public. Um, the notification of sales, whether it's through government to government, foreign military sales, FMS, uh, or licensed commercial sales would be the same under the supplemental as they have been for decades. 
what the proposed the, this provision I think you're asking about would do would be to allow us to waive the congressional notification requirement for supplemental foreign assistance funds, not for arms sales. So, foreign assistance like ESF. Um, I, I don't know the exact program. I'd have to, to look at that. Economic and support you. funds. Yeah, that, it, it, it may be. I'd have to look for it and get the But not for FMF, not uh, for foreign military uh, again, financing I, or I, FMS, I, foreign I, military sales? I would have sales. to dive into it and get back to you. I think the story, from my understanding, conflated funding notifications and arms sales notification. Um, uh, but with it, uh, beyond any details, I'll have to, All right. to and then, gauge after. Uh, my last one is, is when, when you talk about the hospitals and, and Hamas, um, you know, using them to, to operate. Uh, you said that you were fairly confident of that assessment. Uh, fairly, that the, fairly confident. We are very confident of that assessment. Very? very confident. Not fairly. Confident. I, I, I'm, well, I just want to make, I, I just want to know what are, the standard we, we, here we is. We are confident. I, 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 okay, I, so yeah. if you're confident that that's yes. the case, then you presumably then don't have any issue with Israel going out if they give people ample warning to leave it's uh, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a very complicated question. Not everyone who's in a hospital can leave. There are questions of whether ambulances can get there and transport them out. It is what makes this difficult so, what makes this issue so difficult. And while I'm yeah. while I'm declining to, to pronounce you know specific I, factual judgments on on difficult well, situations I, I, when I don't you know when facts are evolving all the time. Right, but I mean if you but 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 then you put yourself in the position or you you leave yourself open. Um, to never having a position on it at all. I think we've made pretty clear. I mean, we've made clear what our overall position is. Again, it, we lay out our general principles, but I'm thousands of miles away from Israel right now. We get conflicting information. You hear, you know, we get conflicting information in press reports. You get conflicting information mm -hmm. from people on the ground. It is difficult to pass a, um, uh, a definitive judgment uh, about what has happened, what should happen. Uh, so I'll decline to do that other than going beyond what our principles are regarding okay. civilian protections. Go ahead. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to quickly follow up on the civilian casualties, and I, I will have one more. Uh, you said uh, you have been uh, calling on Israel for a, quite a long time to minimize harm to civilians, but I just wanted to make sure, like, do you really think that Israel is doing everything it can to uh, minimize, minimize harm to civilians, and, and what are the other steps that... Israel so, can take. So we do, as I said, think there are additional steps that they can take. What those additional steps are, we've had very direct conversations with them about that, but I will keep those conversations private. Okay, uh, one more, please. Uh, during the Arab Islamic Summit in Saudi Arabia this weekend, uh, Turkish President Erdogan said that the Israeli minister's remarks about a, a nu nuclear uh, strike on Gaza revealed the existence of Israel's nuclear uh, weapons and called on an international uh, investigation on that. What is the U.S. position on this call for an international uh, investigation? Uh, and do you, I mean, is the U.S. aware of any uh, potential nuclear weapons on, owned by Israel? I don't have any comment on an investigation or, or the underlying question. I will say that the uh, remarks by um, that minister were completely unacceptable, and we are glad they were immediately repudiated by the prime but minister. But you don't support any investigation on that? Uh, I'm just not going to comment on that at all.